So here it is, the G9 Mark II. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? It's been a been a few years. Yeah. Since the last time. But it's okay because uh, you are doing the live stream, so people can just uh, hang hang out with you every week, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's a lot of content. Like, how many live streams you've been doing? Like, 50 or more? Or? Uh, oh, way more than that. Uh, it's been pretty much every Thursday for three years. Whoa! Straight. And I've only missed a handful of them. It's 150 episodes. Yeah. Can you imagine all this content? People should be able to search in that, like an AI search thing. Because yeah. then they can find the time code where you speak about a specific issue. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 definitely one of the the harder things to you know like set up is that that getting the timestamps right for the episodes and we can we can do yeah. it later with a guy on Fiverr. And oh yeah, program it with ChatGPT. Exactly. Right. There you go. Cool. Uh, this is uh, is this the be the perfect camera? Yeah. Well, that's, question. I, that's my question. I mean, you know, for for a lot of people, I think it is. Uh, you know, we we took our time upgrading this one. You know, there's a lot that like we had planned and wanted to do uh, to really kind of make it worthy of of being an update for the for the G9 and some of the biggest stuff. You know, wanting more resolution for you know getting at least into 6K for video recording. Also, being able to go in and you know really just update the stabilizer. Make it out of the box, the new experience, closer to like the GH line. So you're not going to get everything from a GH series camera, but you're going to get a basically all of the stuff that a photographer would need in the video side without going overboard. Um, though even there, I mean, we we sometimes just can't help ourselves, and we still like go to like, all right, we're going to add USB C SSD recording, and then. You know, open gate recording. Um, it's just kind of that that logic that, while well, yes, this is a stills focused camera. This was built for photographers. The world's changed. Everyone yeah. needs a little bit of video, um, and our version of a little bit of video is you shouldn't be gate kept on like kind of what we consider the bare minimum. And that's open gate. That's reliability for longer term recording you know, uh, SSD capabilities, because let's face it, it's way more cost effective to record to SSDs. And um, yeah, uh, just killing it. I like the idea of not having the, what is it called, camera conspiracies, it has the hammer from the Canon, the... the oh, oh, our uh, 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 Pony of Hope. Yeah, the, uh, that too, but uh, uh, you know, like, uh, the, 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 I like the concept of not restricting anything, potentially, yeah. like that's your marketing, right? You're saying that you try to put as much as possible without it overheating. Yeah, and, and, right? and, and obviously within reason for what the product is designed for. You know, the, the, the idea that, you know, we, we have this photo focused camera that has all of this very high level video functionality that, you know, early, early commentary online after we made the announcement was like, well, but this is everything that basically was in the GH6, but it really isn't, you know, everything that's in the GH6. GH6 has, you know, a more robust internal ProRes capability. Where this, you're limited to SD cards, so it's only full HD. You have to go to SSD for that, which is still considered internal recording. You know, there's no tally lamps on this. There's no timecode BNC connector. But that's just because uh, some people, I prefer the SD cards, even yeah. though those new cards are faster. Yeah. But you know, like then you are restricted by that. That's it. Yeah, and and ba basically, no. Yeah. Plus, working on SD cards instead of CF Express, they give us actually a much easier system to work with from a thermal perspective. Um, CF Express cards get very, very hot. That's just kind of what they do. So by sticking to SD cards, which obviously are a lot more commonplace uh, across the, the, the world, especially in, in the imaging world, by sticking to SD cards, it just becomes more approachable for more people. Media is more readily available. But even in that case, you know, we make sure that we have spec cards. We have a validation list now of like, you know, these are the ones that we have tested. If you have problems with cards outside of it, 
you know, we, we kind of tried to warn you that there could be potential. Um, and but, uh, yeah. you know, the, you have stuff for the V90. So if people yeah. get the V90, they get more stuff. Yeah. And otherwise, the V30, V60 the, does a lot of stuff too. Yeah. For, uh, yeah. On this camera. Yeah. I mean, as a as a photographic tool, V30 and V60 is a really good match for this camera. Um, my recommendation, especially with this one, is like if you're gonna run with like um, V30 cards at all, really relegate those just to your photography side. Use the V60 for video because you're gonna want that for you know at least like 400 megabit or 600 megabit per second. Um, but the photo side, you should be fine with. But um, but if you're like me and you just care about the H.265 compression and you just want to up the, upload those videos. Uh, maybe V30 is fine. Well, I, 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 I still recommend V60 minimum because, well, for, for a couple of reasons. Like, for one, you're spending this money on the camera. You're shooting stuff that, in some cases, depending on what you do, you don't have the option to reshoot. V30 cards are usually cheap for a reason. Um, not that either the brand's bad or anything like that. It's just that they're budget cards. So why risk the content and then on top of it if you know you got like fast workaround like like uh, uh workloads and things like that v60 offloads faster onto your computer so yeah, it, there's there's benefits to doing it uh, then, uh, my, my question would be like uh let's say you have a v60 for your main sd card and mm -hmm. just the backup is v30 that's maybe fine yeah because yeah, then, like uh, that's a that's that's a, that's a totally reasonable way to go to it, and I I've, I've said this on on the live streams before. Like, obviously not you know V60 cards and V90 cards they can get expensive. Totally understand that. Not everyone's gonna want to put the money out to get you know two of those same cards, especially when you may look and it maybe like three hundred dollars for cards. Get yourself at least one solid media card, no matter what camera you own get one solid high performance card and then get like a mid tier backup and you'll be fine. And then maybe you can get two or three or four of those backup ones and you put them straight in the pocket as like yeah. a safety and measure yeah. and you swap the other one. It's like a backup in case somebody steals your camera or whatever. And yep. that's why I always dual record. I'm so nervous with a single yeah. camera. I, I, I avoid anything that's single camera, a single, yeah. a single card. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so, so unlimited. Mm -hmm. It's totally unlimited. Just don't go out in a, in a 60 degree Celsius weather and stuff. Yeah. So we we don't call this camera, classify this camera as unlimited recording. For us, unlimited recording means that there is a, like basically absolutely no chance in the measurements that we do at 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 Celsius. When we call it unlimited, those cases the camera will not overheat. In a camera like this, which does become a little more thermal, t thermally temperamental, there's just no time limit. We're not going to enforce a time limit on the camera, so we'll let it run. And if it gets really hot out, yeah, it may, may stop recording on you. It'll give you the warnings. Um, but again, it's, it's that area where we're doing such higher level of testing and kind of benchmark for our, our stuff than anyone else in the industry is doing. You know, we measure to 104 degrees Fahrenheit for our thermal threshold. Most others are only doing 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's cool if you work in a, in a studio, if you got air conditioning and you know, it's fine. But like where I am down in Austin, we had like 113 to 120 degree weather days. Those 70 degree rated cameras were overheating left and right. Ours never had a problem. So, so if you want to live stream uh, 4K 60 uh, from the, the Starship all day uh, in the summer, maybe uh, maybe use the GH6. Uh, but otherwise, uh, because I'm so happy, like I've been, I don't know if I'm the only guy that stayed stuck on my G9 uh, at 1.2 firmware because yep. there was a hack I could do unlimited recording. I've never had a problem. I've done so many. I just did a video that's two two hours and a half. Yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, yeah, uh, uh, because I always do it indoors and it's not too hot. Yeah, uh, I mean it, there there's it's definitely not a a thing that we recommend. 
at all. I mean, we've we've talked about this many a time. It's definitely not something recommended. Um, running at a much higher temperature than what the camera's designed for, or longer term, or letting it get into that threshold. That's where you have things like the you know the the cooling compounds that are used for thermal transfer. You know, they can break down faster that way. So it may not be an immediate thing that you notice, but it may be down the line. Um, but at the same token, we also build pretty reliable cameras across the board no matter what. So, yeah. I, I really like my uh, 12 to 60 lens. I really like it. Mm -hmm. uh, but how about this 10 to 25? Doesn't have the built-in stabilizer, but do you, do you recommend it for guys like me who just do like walk around, uh, you know, like a lot of... Uh, how good I is do. it going to be the stabilizer compared to I do on, on this, on this system. Yeah. So the funny thing about the stabilizer on the G9 Mark II is that normally when you see a dual uh, stabilization system kind of like rated, you'll see that the in-body stabilizer would be like, you know, say eight stops. In our, let's, let's make it a, a, like one of our previous cameras. In-body stabilizer would be like seven stops, but then dual IS would bring it to eight stops, right? That's the normal way you'd think. This camera, it's backwards. Your in-body stabilizer is eight stops. Your lens dual IS two stabilization when you're out at the telephoto range is seven and a half. So it's flipped. And that's because the stabilizer in the system is that much better than what we've done in the past. So when you go to something like the 10 to 25 or the 25 to 50, you legitimately don't need stabilization in those lenses. It's not gonna improve. It, yeah, if Your anything, experience. it actually could make it worse. That's crazy. And we typically, if you look at our line, 50 millimeter field of view and below, we typically will not put stabilization in it for a couple of reasons. One, makes the optics larger and more complex to develop. And people already say, you know, you want smaller cameras and stuff. So, you know, we're, we're giving everyone what they're asking for. At the same time, the, the system as a whole just is a, is, is a lot more flexible with the way the cameras are built these days. So, did you have a meeting? Uh, you can ask. Uh, yeah, meeting, I think. Uh, yeah, because uh, that's one of the reasons why Micro Four Thirds is just like uh, a dream because of yeah. the stabilization. Yeah, it's like uh, I, it feels like I have a gimbal. Uh, yeah, kind and of, it's right? and, and 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 you're on the the original G9. Yeah, it's even better on this one because now we've got all the stuff that we've learned with the Active IS deployment for the S series, and the small the the Four Thirds sensor is easier to stabilize for us. So, so I should definitely consider it 1025. It's just heavier and bigger, it's a, but it's amazing quality. It is. Huh? It's, it's, it's a lot sharper. I... It's a lot faster. Overall, it is just a much better lens. But I, I understand what everyone says about wanting stabilization. And you know, it's kind of that you just kind of get into that process where you just think it's what's needed. I think it's on my wish list. Yeah. Okay, that one. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's awesome. And then there, there was a big question. The autofocus now is PDA. Uh, one of the, let's say, uh, podium uh, class leaders were global. Worldwide. Yeah. You, you, got, you, got it, you got it right. Didn't yeah. You? Yeah. Um, you know, it, we always like to say that uh, certain, certain things uh, that we develop were, were more like a tanker ship. So it takes us a little while to get the turn moving. But when we decide to change course, it, it's, a, it's a pretty rapid shift at that point. But all along that, that period, there's development going on. There's, there's you know, work to, to not be where you, know, you launch it and you're at zero, basically. We want to launch and be at like 90. So yeah, we, we spent a ton of time tuning, uh, really refining the autofocus on the S5 Mark IIs to where you know we did a lot of uh, seated testing, uh, camera out to actual you know wedding event photographers, videographers, wildlife photographers, and videographers, where 
their feedback helped us, you know, really refine it. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's it's done being refined by any means, uh, but that led into the G9 Mark II in what we wanted to do with this. It's why we were able to do animal eye detection in this. We were able to do car and motorcycle tracking. And that's why we keep both of these systems around. They play incredibly well with each other despite not sharing the same mount. Uh, and uh, because it's Micro Four Thirds, does that mean you can do a better AF than the full frame? Or you cannot say Not that? necessarily. Because it seems like it would be easier to process the stuff. It, it, not necessarily because you're still processing the same amount of data. It's just that the sensor on this can read out faster. So you have better, you know, less rolling shutter. Um, the architecture in this sensor is also incredibly different than what you typically have seen in, in four thirds. Um, for one, it's not an FSI sensor. So just, you know, people have been asking that. I can't state what it is, but it's not an FSI sensor. Um, I can say, I can tell you it's not a stacked sensor, but we're able to keep up with the speed of a stacked micro four thirds sensor as well. Um, and yeah, it just, just a lot of engineering and passion went into actually giving it a legitimate update that was worthy of the time we took for it. So I think your next appointment is waiting. So last question, uh, because this is an important question for the Micro Four Thirds fans out there, is uh, hopefully it's a huge success and it's going to be like, uh, you know, uh, I, I think millions of people should get this kind of camera and people should stop yeah. stop photographing the, the babies and, uh, uh, and the, the weddings and everything with iPhones and stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like uh, it's uh, the marketing. You should, you should tell everybody to get, get on board. <laughs> and uh, the price is right. Yeah. The price not is not bad, right? Yeah. No, and it's I, I, 1999 in the U.S. So it's right there with what many of the other in the category are for. But it's offering a lot more than pretty much all the other ones out there. And what can you say about the success? Oh, I mean, it, the, this thing. What you've read online, uh, potentially in some of those the forums, is just wrong. This, this thing is doing so well for us, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Really? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. No, it's... it's the, the combination of what we did and the hype that came behind it, the, the desire, you know, because of how long it took us to, to develop it, 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 people were ready. The biggest thing is that, and I, 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 I do this all the time too, I go on the forums, I go on, you know, the, the different Facebook groups, and I'll go through the comments and I'll, I'll read through them. and, and you know, three rumors. I, all of them. And you kind of get sucked into it, right? The vast majority of people that are purchasing our cameras are not people that are sitting spending time on the forums. They're out there creating things. Um, that's not to say that those of you on the forums are not creating things. I do not mean not that at all. I'm not no, 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 but talking. like viewers, you know? But it's like, yes, having the big conversations online about, you know, the deep tech specs and all that stuff, it's great. But people that are online stating that they think they know st things about what, what our sales are, what our, how the technology works, they don't know. Yeah, they, they just don't. So sales-wise, this thing's been just a rock star for us. It's a good follow-up to what we did with the S5 Mark II, the Mark II X. It's a good follow-up to what we've done on, uh, even in the GH6, what you know kind of started the shift into a newer series with us. And it was we're worth excited. it to wait the four and a half years. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, I can't imagine what what's left to do for the GH7, but uh, I guess there's a bunch of stuff. I think it should be called the GH8K. Uh, <laughs> and, and the guy from Camera Conspiracies, he should uh, you know. It's done. This is a perfect camera, I think. <laughs> so uh, he should. He, of course, you can talk about the DJI uh, Pocket Three and all that stuff, but it's just a different thing. Yeah. This is uh, this is this is Hollywood at home for two, for under two two thousand. There you go. Right. There you go. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah, of course, man.